So after kind of meeting with Trevor yesterday, we really realized that he he is the event himself. He's a lot of fun. He um, he has so much spirit just related to the book itself that basically our job as booksellers is to generate interest in getting people to the store for his event because once once he's there, we're good. Um, so we came up with a concept because his book is so themed in adventure and exploration that um, we would create a a kind of kind of like a Where's Waldo concept, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, um, but do a map. Um, let's see if I can find a page quickly. So at the beginning of the book, it, it has a map of kind of the explorations and adventures that the characters go on. Um, so we would work to partner with um, local stores, if there are stores in your area. If not, then maybe the local library and your own store, and we'll have kind of hidden frogs which is a big part of the book. Mm -hmm. And so the kids will get their pocket map a month or so in advance. Um, and they'll get to go to the local places and try to find some of the main characters in frog form um, throughout our store, the local library, maybe it's a school, maybe it's a pizza place next door, whatever works best for, for your direct area. Um, and then when the kids go and they find the frogs, they get a stamp and there'll be information about the characters um, on the map itself, because a lot of it, which I found out yesterday, is actually rooted in Aboriginal culture, and a lot of it is very scientifically accurate. So we kind of want to have some of that included on the map so kids are aware of those concepts before Trevor comes to speak. So the whole purpose of the scavenger hunt is to direct everyone to the store on a specific date, because that's the date that Trevor will be coming to discuss his book. So, Trevor was going to be his bit. Comedy, comedy time. Um, uh, so, one, the, the things, this is my second book in the series, and the thing that I realized very quickly is, um, as a kid, I was not an uh, avid reader. I was a very reluctant reader. Like most hyper-athletic um, kids that are built like me, or even my own son who's nine years old. And what I, what I try to do in the schools is, pull a little bit of a bait and switch. Uh, I wasn't an average reader, I was an average writer. I was a, a very um, vicious writer. I wrote a lot because there was not a, not a lot of comic books. So I try, to take a, I try to take a stance when I'm talking to kids or I'm presenting my book of, at nine years old, what did I want to hear uh, from an author? And I, I remember sitting through plenty of author presentations. I grew up in Irvington, New Jersey, and uh, Castleberry, Florida, in a decent middle class neighborhood. And five minutes in, I am asleep. <laughs> so what I try to do is say, okay, what do these kids, especially the boys, want to hear? The funny thing is, though, this book was not written for boys. It was basically written for girls. And what I mean by that is uh, my publisher, Abrams, is a great publisher. And, you know, God bless them. They picked this crazy idea of mine. But the best thing they did was the editor said, uh, there was, there's four Kalapari superhero frogs, superhero amphibians. When I first pitched it, I said, oh, Three boys, one girl, uh, and Susan said, make two of them girls. Um, and that was the best advice anyone's ever given me because I am finding out now that more girls read these books than boys. It's very easy to capture superheroes with boys. and They love the, and the fighting and the, you know, the action, the violence and whatnot. Uh, but the story, I think, um, is written so that, I, I think girl readers, young girl readers, they, they, they identify with the story a little more, the heartbreak in it and the things that happen. So anyway, I'm starting to figure out now, especially when I go sign books, I always write something a little different to the girls and the boys. The boys are just sign the book and send them on their way, right? They just like the pictures, whatever. <laughs> but the girls, I, I always write, I always write, we need more superheroes like you. And they, and they, they appreciate that more than uh, I thought they would at first. Um, so anyway, so when I'm when I'm presenting the books, the bait and switch part is when you know you have a professional athlete come to your school. You figure out. Oh, I've been to boys' schools. You figure a class of boys are going to talk about football. I said, let me do the presentation first, and I'll answer any questions you want. Uh, and 20 minutes after the presentation, the football thing is out of their freaking minds. Because what I do is I show them all these moving pictures, and I show them all these bright, colorful things, and I show them um, stuff that I've written which is not just a book, but video games, comics, you see all this stuff. 
And by the time they uh, get to talk to me, football is the very last thing in their minds. Um, so, so that's what I mean by a bait and switch. I can show them a PlayStation game. I can show them footage of the game. I can show them all these crazy things. And I go, but you have to read the book first to know what the hell you just saw. And they read the book. And they all buy the book. So um, as a nine-year-old boy and as a, as a, a father of a nine-year-old boy, and him and his buddies, um, and that type of thing, I, I have found that personally, I have to approach it unlike, um, I cannot approach it as an author. I have to approach it as a storyteller. And what is that story? And where does that story start? My story starts with my three books. That's the canon. Color Party, you all have children. Uh, you will all be giving me money soon enough, believe me. <laughs> but what I'm saying as parents, not as booksellers, but as parents, but what I'm saying is just like um, the first three movies in Star Wars with the canon for the huge Star Wars universe, these three books are my canon, and I, I hold them dearly to my heart. Um, they are the first thing I've ever done, and I'm ultra proud of, including winning Super Bowls, I swear to God. Um, but uh, that's, that's what I think um, they've come up with something where I, you know, I, I pride myself on being uh, a, someone with great ideas, but I never thought of doing a scavenger hunt. I'm like, there's a map inside my book. I cannot, I cannot even think of this. Reevaluate my life. <laughs> um, so anyway, so um, that that's part of the selling of the book, um, and uh, the age-appropriate part of it. I I have in my and I hate saying this, but I've turned away some kids from the books. Um, so some of them, you know, they see the the, the colors and they think it's you know it's just some you know, bright, colorful book with some pictures in it. And, you know, six-year-old girl walks up. She's like, I can't wait to read this. And I tell her parents, I'm saying. She should not read this, you know, I, and that's fine. But if she has a big, like this happened the other day, she had a big sister who was 12. I said, you read the book and you tell her what happens, in your own words. And that's how I sold the book. So me being honest with uh, you guys and being honest with the, the, the kids that want to read the book and the adults that want to 